What? <laughs> Is it like only once? It's like a one move. Count. Yeah, you only have one turn. Oh, shit. Well, it's easy. Oh, wait. Just do that. And then combo. Oh, okay. Because I was going to be like, just move the pieces manually. And then it was like, pfft, no. <laughs> but yeah, okay, okay. So, uh, what's another movie you unironically like that other people... How about to that one? Uh, shit. Uh, oh, Pokemon yeah. the first movie. Really? Do people not like the first movie? People hate it. Like, critics hated Pokemon the first movie. Like, okay, so obviously there was the nostalgia critic, but his reputation has already been down the shitter. But there's been other people who have also criticized the movie, saying that it's not good, but it's still enjoyable. I think that it's, like, I think it's more than enjoyable. Like, I'm, it's not the greatest thing since sliced bread, obviously. Um, but... I think a lot of people overlook a lot of detail in which, just on its own merits, that I think they're kind of missing the point of something. Like, there's this whole argument saying that, am I the only one who thinks that's ironic that the movie is telling us that fighting is bad, and yet you have an entire franchise about fighting? Well, there's... There's a difference between fighting as a sport and fighting to the death. Yeah, because the thing is, is that I know that people like to equate Pokemon with, like, cockfights and stuff to or dog fighting yeah but the thing is the pokemon are sentient enough to give consent to fight yeah i mean some of the biggest uh plots of pokemon episodes is ash finding pokemon that are not consenting to fight or being abused by their trainers yeah like there there is i think people don't uh acknowledge the intelligence of the Pokemon in the in the universe that that to to um oh well I just fucked myself <laughs> but it's just, but you know it's the it's that kind of thing where I think people want to equate it so much to real life when it really I mean the Pokemon are not even really animals they're monsters, and they're also like aliens. You did it again. Ah, uh, what the hell am I supposed to do? Do you want me to try this next time? Yeah, go ahead. But, uh, the other thing is, um, uh, there's the other complaint saying that nobody learned anything, and that when their memories are erased, they said that we're gonna forget everything we spent the past hour and a half learning in the first place. I'm like. Well, obviously, they were the ones who talked yeah, about... I did the same thing. <laughs> they were the ones who were talking about the differences in how fighting is done. Like, people make fun of Nurse Joy saying, Pokemon are not meant to fight like this. It's like, well, it's still a point. They're not meant to fight to the death. Um, it is a little ham-fisted. I will give it that. Um, but they already know all this. They were the ones who were actually trying to tell Mewtwo, no, this is not the right way of going about this. It was Mewtwo who had to learn all of this. I mean, how it all started, he began as a clone. He doesn't know much of his identity. He doesn't know his power. And he was completely discouraged by Giovanni's expense. So, with this bad impression that he has... Oh, so you just have to realign all of them we the whole time. We had to make them five combos. God, we're stupid. That's what I would normally do, but because of the amount of hit, like moves you can do, it's like, I think it's like pull, like making a, tr like a trick on something. Uh, but yeah, it was Mewtwo who had to learn that stuff because he had a problem with his own identity and he he misunderstood the world and thought of it as just this cruel place of enslavery. And yeah, if you're in that kind of predicament, yeah, of course you would want to do something about it. So that's really what it all comes down to. It was about Mewtwo. That's actually who we were first centered on before the movie begins. So... Um, the movie has a lot of its problems. Its message, at the end of the day, was still ham-fisted. Like, it was in your face. And they, they just continue doing it, and it does get annoying to a lot of people. Um, something else that actually kind of annoyed me personally, there was a scene, a deleted scene, that was in the original, um, Pokemon movie. It was just called Mewtwo Strikes, uh, Strikes Back in Japan. Apparently, um... There was a deleted scene where a scientist was trying to clone oh, and revive her uh, his daughter. 
And it's a very beautiful scene where Mewtwo is in his, um, his, uh, production process, and he meets, like, it's, he's in this fantasy Cause, cause realm. Because they, they, they completely, um, bypass the motivation of the scientists to be doing this, um, regenerative technology. Because they were trying to make a cloning program to revive the main scientist's daughter, and uh -huh. what they were using Pokemon is basically guinea pigs. That's why you had the starter Pokemon clones that were also failed experiments. Yeah, so base, yeah, so the deleted scene, which actually explains so much... Gets regulated to, like, a bonus on the VHS copy. Well, it's not even, like, a regulated to a bonus VHS. That, that one scene defines so much that people took, um original issues with, I fucked up badly. <laughs> um, it, it, it basically, they talk about the Pokemon Tears. So, at the end of the movie, Ash has turned into a statue, which is kind of weird from a psychic beam. Oh, I did what you did. <laughs> Wait! Wait! There you go. Okay, wow, that, uh, was a, that was a mind tricker. I, I'm a genius. <laughs> but, yeah, here's the thing. I wonder how much of that was a uh, executive decisions that came to localization because the I think Chris made a really good because he reviewed this uh, a release of the Sonic X anime uh-huh and he brings up a lot of good points of the over hate of four kids localization because the uh, how do I word it the uh. the oh god it's like, okay, you would have to drop that rope down to create this big thing. Well, there's an over-hate of four kids because of all the changes they had to do. But the problem is, what is considered child-appropriate um, an anime mm -hmm. in Japan is a completely different standard than the U.S. They, and, the, and when they got the localization rights for all these things... There, it came with a bunch of uh, basically red tape that they had to work with, or else we would have never gotten these things in the U.S. when we did. And I and I feel like I feel like we give oh okay. I feel like we give four kids a bad rap, even though they did set a precedent, and um, and they did form a lot of. I mean, I'm talking to the audience at this point. Okay. They. They really, um, you know, provided the childhood and, and opened the door to localization. I would argue that if we didn't have the four kids, you know, localizations of different anime dubs, we would have never gotten the alternate versions that we have today, like Funimation and all that stuff. You can, you can argue how they handled it, but if you were in that situation, where you had all this red tape, mm -hmm. and the choices were adapt to it how you can, or not provide the thing at all. I, I'm glad that they picked adapting it how they can, and one of those executive things was mm -hmm. there was a bunch of red tape thinking that um, that, that uh, beginning was too inappropriate for children. And you notice as... Um, for kids localization developed that they were able to retain more and more things Pokemon 3 actually is a great example of that in fact one of the changes they did to Pokemon 3 I feel like helps the narrative of the movie actually I will say this much as much as I take appreciation with Pokemon the first movie Pokemon 3 the movie was really fucking nice to watch yeah Sorry if I'm changing the no, subject. No, 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 no. It's um, the Digimon movie is a is a weird thing because, like you said, it's three different Digi. They weren't. They even... They were like a series of shorts, weren't they? In fact, the beginning of the movie I think was the pilot for for Digimon, but uh, no, the change that they did to Pokemon Three was the scene where you actually see um. The, the the girl's father come out of the uh, wall yeah. of the unknown was originally an after credit scene. 
Huh. And they moved it to within the movie because they didn't know... You know, this was before the time where everyone sat through the credits to see the after credit scene that Marvel indoctrinated us into. Mm -hmm. So, it's, um... They did a really good job with Pokemon 3. I really should have moved that piece when I had the chance. Damn it. All right. I'm trying to look for but, the main know, campaign. It, it, it's the sad thing that, um, because of networks, because that, that's the big thing. Localization is also, um, it is not just for kids' decisions. It's also, you the know, networks. networks or the, or the, uh, it's not the MMPA when it comes to movie ratings, right? Uh, it's, it's... That's video games. No, no, video games is the ESRB. But, yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cogs to how the sausage gets made. And I feel like people don't look into that and rather just see the product itself and not the stuff that went into it. Or the things, or the hurdles that the creators or localizers had to go through. And it is kind of important to do that. And to give an example... Um, cause I didn't know about this until I saw the, 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 the nostalgia critic review. I, I always feel dirty mentioning that, but I was very blown away by one of his reviews when he tackled on Cool World and that like when I first like saw Cool World, I thought this looks like it's trying to be an adult version of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And it turned out there was a completely different side of the story of what Ralph Bakshi intended to do. And that was, it was supposed to be a horror, uh, type of movie. Where, yeah, where there was an offspring of a live action person. A hybrid, yeah. And it's like, that is bizarre, but that's genius at the same time. But executives at Paramount decided to change it to make the movie marketable. And even Kim Basinger uh, agreed to it because she wanted her kids to see the movie that she was in. And it's like, I think there's more important things out there than just trying to see what's marketable. But that's the mindset of what the uh, studios are. So... This sounds like a similar story when it comes to what four kids had to do with these corporations who won't bother to grow a spine. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm paraphrasing a lot of what uh, Chris talked about. If you guys want to hear more about this stuff, uh, I would highly implore you to go to Aficionado Chris's channel and watch his Sonic X video. It is, it is very good. It's also... I think one of the funniest videos he ever did. I helped with a lot of gags in that one. Okay. And uh, I, I think uh, people would would uh, have a good ch chuckle, but it's an educational chuckle. And it's that that's isn't that the best kind of chuckle you can have? Is a chuckle where you also learn something. Yeah. Uh, show the kids a movie I'm in with adult stuff. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. So. Like, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I think he's still talking about Cool World. I think Cool World was supposed to be a hard R movie. It, well, that's the thing. It was... The, the sad thing about Ralph Bakshi is he was someone who is and will forever be an innovator in the animation industry. But it's back in a time of, you know, the... Yeah, the, the heart. Oh, okay. So All right, I'll give you that. Patience is the key, Brett. But the, he was an innovator in the time where animation was experimental and you could actually have like indie animation sleeper hits. Keep in mind, Fritz the Cat. Oh, you talking about the 70s? Yeah. Fritz oh, yeah. the Cat was one of the most successful movies of all time with it, with the only movie that oh. competed with it in revenue was The Godfather. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And Wait, didn't The Godfather come out in 72 though? Because I thought Fritz the Cat came out in 73. It could have been The Godfather, too. I, I don't know. But um, The Godfather was, was one of the, like, things competing with it. Um, point being, he pioneered X-rated films and, you know, adult animation. And a lot of his further works had that. But as the industry kind of grew into this rut that we are still arguably in of... Uh, animation having to be like a family friendly environment. Yeah, and I, it's... I, he was kind of cast aside, and while he wanted to push more of this stuff into the mainstream, the mainstream wanted to push back because, and and here now this is conjecture in my own personal opinion and uh -huh. not fact. Yeah, there's the, I, the thing is, 
the big wigs set up the indoctrination of the uh, public's mindset. Mm -hmm. It's because if you condition people with enough of the same thing, they themselves will have the same point of view that the that the big wigs want you to have. Put in enough of family-friendly entertainment being the norm of animation, and people are going to think that animation is a children's uh, medium. Uh, or uh, it, the in in, uh, incorrect nomenclature that animation is a genre and not a medium. And you know, this is the reason why Brad Bird hasn't been able to do the animated horror film he's wanted to do for fucking years. And we are only now reaching this transition period where we are getting more young adult animated content and eventually adult animated content. Kudos to Sony. Because Sony has uh, like stated la uh, late last year or something uh -huh. that they are actually going to be investing in more adult, uh, adult rated animation. And all my hope is is that it's not only comedy. Because that's the thing, I feel like we don't have enough dramatic or horror-based adult animation, or even young adult animation, in general. Because people think, you know, if it has to be adult, it has to be comedy. And I feel like... No, there's more to it than that. Well, I feel like with the... With, that we are slowly getting out of that with, uh, of all things, Netflix, with BoJack and stuff, where you can be introspective using animation. Um... So, who knows, maybe Brad Bird will finally get his horror film using it with Sony. You know, honestly, I would love to see that. And it, since you're talking about, like, animated horror and such, you remember Monster House? I, okay, you know that question that I had of what uh, movie I unironically like that a lot of people don't? What? Monster House. <laughs> you know how few people I know that actually like Monster House? Actually, I thought that I thought that movie like got like an underground uh, following. It has a cult status, but I know plenty of people who don't like it.